I've tried to make it very clear in several past videos that the only way to salvation, to be present with God for eternity, is through the blood of Jesus Christ, of cleansing you of your past, present, and future sin. But when you are cleansed, when you form a real relationship with Jesus Christ, when you um, bring your hearts together, when you know Him, and He knows you, and He is your Father, and you are His Son, when you have that kind of relationship with God, the Spirit, because the Word says so, it's promised in the Word, the Spirit will dwell within you. The Spirit, the literal Spirit of God will dwell within you. And if that is the case, you will desire to be about your Father's business. You will desire it. You won't be able to restrain yourself. It'll be very important to you that you are conducting the business of God, that, that the works of the worlds don't matter anymore, but the works of God are the only thing that really matters. And if you're not doing that, then I think you need to really question your salvation because God knows your works. And it says in the Bible, a faith without works is dead. It's dead. Now, when it comes to the end of the church age, uh, they're really kind of just hammering a nail in their own coffin when it comes to their re relationship with Jesus Christ because it specifically says in Amos 5, verse 18, about a second coming, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, for what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days. Now, this is directly to the church, by the way. And I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. Nor will I regard your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. It's about justice. Justice is about to be served for your works specifically. You are about to receive justice and judgment from Jesus Christ himself for your works. And as the world knows that, like even as you hear these words where most of the world is going as they're going in 2 Timothy 3.1, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's really what a lot of people are doing. They're, they're going to church and they're, they're gaining uh, knowledge, but they have no understanding of the truth. And, and you know what I'm talking I mean, you could look at any church USA and the general body of that church, for the most part, is going to look a lot like this. And in their mind, they're thinking, well, but I'm saved. Like, I'm going to be okay. I'm, I'm just going to get raptured up before the tribulation. And, but God's just going to put a big old crown of glory on my head. And that's not how it's going to play out at all. And I think that the church and the leaders of the church are leading, uh, uh, for centuries, have led this idea that you just got to say some words one time, and that's it. You're done. You have not, there's nothing else you need to do. Once saved, always saved. You just say it once, that's it. You're done. You don't have to do anything. But be very, very, very clear. That is not what Jesus Christ said. That is not what he said. As a matter of fact, the exact words Jesus Christ used was he said in Matthew 25, verse 31, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all, his, all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you 
from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. And I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. You know, you don't hear that a lot in church these days because it means that your works count. It means that you will be judged for your works. Literally, not figuratively, literally. And the only reason isn't that salvation came through your works. Salvation led you to desire to be about your father's business, and this is his business. His business is to literally do everything that Jesus just mentioned. If you're not doing that, you are way outside the will of God. You're so far outside his will, it is ridiculous. And in the end, he knows exactly what you're doing. He knows exactly what you're doing. If you're just out putting on the Sunday show or attending the Sunday show and living a life of selfishness and gluttonous and just kicking it in the air conditioner with your comforts and not at all doing anything on this list, it specifically says that you go off into everlasting punishment. Um, Sorry, (laughs) I didn't say it. Jesus Christ said it. So again, he knows what you do. Um, He knows what you did. He knows what you're going to do. I recommend you take some time and really pray and invite that spirit in. And once the spirit dwells within, you desire to be about your father's business. If you don't desire to be about your father's business, I really believe you need to question your salvation. Love to hear your thoughts on all that. Put in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. I never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.